Um, hi. <laughs> we have got the lovely Joe Carroll um, oh. joining us from This Is A Velva, which basically doesn't need much description, um, <laughs> which is an amazing setup, um, all about kind of normalizing velvas, taking the stigma off what is a vulva and everything to do with it and stopping the rise of, I can't even say the word, labia, labia plasty, la, labia plasty, labia yes. plasty, which we'll get <laughs> onto um, in a bit. And just basically getting people to own their vulvas with pride and realize that they're not freaks. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, and which I think is amazing. And you do loads with periods and just stis i saw the yeah amazing sti um set up so yeah. how just start at the beginning <laughs> of how <laughs> yeah how and why <laughs> this is a vulva came to be yeah sure it was about four or five years ago now um and i went to women of the world festival the big feminist festival that happens um actually it happens all over the world now but it was the one at uh, in london at the south bank and um, I was listening to a talk and there was an illustrator there called Jo Harrison. And at the end of the talk, she handed out this um, annotated color by numbers vulva. And I just thought it was amazing. I went home, I put it on my fridge and I lived with about seven other people at the time. And loads of like my mates and their mates would come around and they were all educated feminist people. And they'd come around and they'd look at this diagram of a vulva and just be totally baffled by it and be like <laughs> I didn't know that's what I had or like what is this bit or like I don't think I've got one of these and I just thought oh no like we don't know what our own bodies look like and I think you can't say the same for penises like if I said to you close your eyes and draw cock and balls you'd be like this is not <laughs> yeah, a problem because you're taught to from the age of 10 exactly <laughs> so, yeah. you can put all the veins in like you'd know exactly what you were doing but if I said to the majority of people close your eyes and draw a vulva I don't think we'd know where to start um so I thought almost as a joke I sort of thought okay I'm going to start a vulva Instagram I'm just going to put lots of images of vulvas up there to kind of counterbalance the dicks on the internet and just <laughs> have them as a kind of educational resource but in like a nice arts way but then I did more research and just did lots more reading and spoke to more people and found out some really upsetting facts. So um, the one that really sticks with me is that there are nine year olds in the UK asking for labiaplasty on the NHS. And labiaplasty is where you would have plastic surgery to change the shape of your vulva, normally to reduce the size of the labia. And at nine years old, like, I mean, I was a slow developer, but at nine, I was probably playing in the garden with my brother. That's making horrific. Yeah. yeah, I was not thinking about going and having surgery on my genitals. So it just made me think, OK, this is actually a lot more important than just a couple of vulvas on Instagram. So it's become much more about sex education, about finding out what the vulva is and what it isn't, what all the parts are called, because whilst I think you can call your genitals whatever you like, you can have the silliest names for them, whatever, I don't really care. But as long as you know what the actual names for all the bits are, then you can name them whatever you like. But if you're going to the doctor and you're talking about down there, you could be talking about anything. You could be talking about your anus for the doctor knows. Mm -hmm. like there's, you, don't have, you don't know what's going on. Um, and also it's about celebration as well it's about trying to get people to see vulvas in all of their different forms all the different shapes and sizes and colors and textures and just thinking oh yeah cool that's a vulva just a nice normal vulva there's no better or worse there's no good or bad um so yeah that's the plan and the plan is to hopefully stem the rise in women well people with vulvas wanting yeah. pasty, basically and that's because the, the people with vulvas, that's, you know, it's a minefield out there and you see it and you read about, you know, people saying the wrong thing. And a lot of people accidentally say the wrong thing. I think when it, because they don't know what they're meant to say is that women, you know, you're women, well, some women don't have vulvas, but what are you, you know, it's that kind of, so how, how do you get round that sort of the, the minefield of, of it's well, women and vulvas and someone going, well, it's not just women and, and yeah, that side of the conversation so this is a vulva it's, it's a completely inclusive space so it's for anybody who has vulva who likes vulvas who knows nothing about vulvas and wants to find out about them i the language i use is talking about vulvas 
it's not I don't link them to genders so if I if I need to I'll talk about people with vulvas and that includes everybody um, but yeah not every woman has a vulva and not every vulva belongs to a woman and I 100% stand by that any comments on my account that say the opposite will just get no it's it. true no it is true we've got um we've got quite a few trans members now within KK and it you know it's sort of yeah Absolutely, there's people no reason why they can't be included. <laughs> like people, in people with willies, people with vulvas. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's all. It, that's all there is to it, basically. Yeah. Um, and so, to start, because a lot of people, when when they do watch this, and you know, I it, t- it took me a while to actually, and I think I had the wrong perception of what, because you don't really get taught it. I was never taught all the exact bits at school. And a lot of people go, it's a vagina. Is a vagina, what's the difference between a vagina and a vulva? And so just explain what is a vulva. So the vulva is everything on the outside. So I've actually got here, it's yes. a cast of my <laughs> vulva. This is what my vulva looks like. So everything that you can see on the outside from- That's a um, very pretty vulva. Thank you, I think so too. <laughs> but basically everything on the outside, anything that touches your pants, basically, that's the vulva. And the vagina is, um, it's, the like muscular tube on the inside and it's where you put tampons menstrual cups fingers toys penises that's the vagina it's the inside so the word vagina has in in it so that can help you remember that vagina is the inside nice. and vulva is everything on the outside and that's what people, i'm going to teach my daughters yeah the in, the in bit <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you remember in northeast bit. and you never eat shredded wheat for northeast yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The vagina has in in it <laughs> exactly <laughs> Um, and what what so what drives you? What's the main main bit in you that you're most passionate about that you wanna you wanna change that gets you really angry? It it's people feeling so negative about their bodies. It really is the kind of that drive for labiaplasty. It's it's so firmly interlinked with feminism about um, wanting us to just be able to feel positive and be able to put our best selves forward and not have another beauty image that we're bashing ourselves over the head with being told that it needs to look like this and smell like that and be shaved like this like I don't that all is bollocks to me I think that's useless and pointless um what drives me is that I often get messages from people around the world that have are have either come across my feed and have said it's completely changed the way they feel about their own genitals to the point where some people have said I now let my partner go down on me. I'm having all these amazing orgasms. Like I feel so much happier. Or I'll get changed in like with the light on in front of my partner. And to me, I just think, oh my goodness, I've just been putting vulvas on Instagram. And now this is making a positive impact in someone's lives. Um, and then the other side of that is people contacting me, asking me lots of questions about like, is this normal? My partner said X, Y, or Z negative about, about my vulva. And it's those things I just want to, I want to go through the phone and say to them, like, they don't deserve to be near your genitals. If that's what they're going to be saying to you, don't let them anywhere near them because they're not, they're not worth it. They don't, they're not deserving of being near your genitals if they're going to be negative. Yeah, I remember being so insecure, like self conscious in like my early twenties. And I think because I grew up, well, at university and I was massively into sports. So I lived with sportsmen and it's just the language of like beef curtains and turkey giblets. And it was so all these terms and it just and I remember and I think so clearly it took me ages to actually be able to let a guy go down without worrying because one of they used to play the game of of when they went down on girls they'd do the alphabet with their tongue so mm. for ages I'd be like oh my god is this guy trying to do the alphabet and is he hating it and and, and it, all I could see was beef beef curtains and <laughs> it was just, sort of, it's just ridiculous but yeah that that terminology that's I, yeah, yeah that's what I mean you have a few comments like that or you read it about what someone's been saying about somebody else or you hear guys talking about it and that just gets in your head and if that's stopping you then enjoying someone going down on you then like that's awful like sex is supposed to be about play and discovery and happiness and joy and and good feelings and if that's not happening because your brain is going beef curtains beef curtains beef yeah. curtains like it's like <laughs> that's not good. yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly because then if you look at it the other way it's like look at a penis I mean you know <laughs> exactly exactly like I just feel all genitals are just they're all just very very normal like on the one hand they're all very beautiful and on the other hand it's like 
they're just genitals they just look like genitals sometimes they you know you look at them and you just think like oh yeah what's going on but like it's they're just normal like genitals in whatever do you form. often get asked that do you often get asked what is no what is a normal vulva i get asked that <laughs> constantly yeah and like it's weird because i kind of see sort of between all vulvas are normal like there is nothing there is no abnormal when it comes to vulvas but on the other hand normal almost um creates a sense of like well here's what they're also put like they're all, if they're normal they look a certain way mm. whereas because like you're never going to find another vulva that looks like yours you might find one a bit similar but you'll never find one exactly the same so using the term normal it's almost like there is so no there normal. are some abnormal ones it implies doesn't it that yeah exactly and there is no abnormal ones. there is just there is just vulvas there is just genitals that's all that there is there is like we don't talk about normal elbows for example like there just yeah. is elbows there just is genitals and I think it's it's hard to find a I'm still working out what terminology I want to use in that respect because yes your vulva is normal but also there is no normal so don't worry about yeah. it and it's it wouldn't hard. be abnormal because actually to be honest most of the time when it when something might be slightly not abnormal but needing is more when it's after childbirth and there's mm -hmm. stuff that's happened but that's not that's the vagina that's the you know that's the prolapse going on inside it's not yeah. it's not the that's external vulva that yeah, it might be might... battered to shit when you've had them. I've, yeah. had three out, I've had three out that way, and yeah, but um, but it's still it's still but even normal. So, like like <laughs> even if your vulva has got tears or anything from having childbirth, that doesn't make your vulva abnormal. Like there's nothing abnormal about childbirth. There's nothing abnormal about your vulva tearing during childbirth. Like that can happen. That is a normal thing to happen. You know, it doesn't suddenly make you like this horrific, disgusting, awful other. You're mm -hmm. just you've just got a vulva that had a tear when you had a baby like that's all that it is and I think it's that kind of constant othering of stuff that I think is yeah is sort of damaging or a vajas as I called my firstborn when the <laughs> vagina with the stitching went all the way around to create a vajas that's one to add to your terminology <laughs> yeah. what um what what's like the biggest myths and like misconceptions would you say so i think the biggest misconception i have i constantly hear and see is that the so you've got the two different i'm going to show you this so you've got the two um types of like lips or labia so you've got the outer labia and the inner labia and the outer labia are called the labia majora and majora sounds like big major big and you've got the labia minora which sounds like small or minimal so most people think that that means you shouldn't be able to see the inner labia, the labia minora, outside of the labia majora, which is nonsense. I think it's somewhere between 50 and 75% of vulvas have the inner labia. You can see them, they protrude outside of the labia majora. Yeah. But what you mostly see in mainstream porn and what you see if you see um, like uh, people, like models with, skimpy underwear and bikinis on it's all been smoothed out like through photoshop and for um, mainstream porn a lot of the actresses or actors sorry have had labiaplasty done so they've got a very specific type of labia or they've been chosen because they have that type of labia therefore we only see a very certain type of labia which is very very small labia minora and you can't see them outside of the labia mm. majora those vulvas exist and they are totally normal and they're totally fine but we've got this idea that they're the better more acceptable vulva that everybody wants which is nonsense yeah no porn has a lot has a lot you know i'm not pro or anti i'm kind of i see the yin and the yang um yeah yeah, yeah to it. Not anti -porn, but it's, it's got a lot to answer for when it comes to the perceptions and yeah even teenage boys are like this is you know these are noises that girls should make and yeah you know and us thinking you should make those noises and guys thinking that they should last an hour before they come and you know yeah. it's just there's so much that Throat grabbing it's like all these things yeah. that like kids sort of see and think is normal and actually I don't necessarily think that's porn's fault it's more that we haven't got the sex education that shows mm. children what sex actually looks like and feels like and and emotionally is like we only if, you, if you're not being taught it you're obviously going to go and find out about it from somewhere else and that's going to be the internet and the internet is an absolute 
Yeah. No, I'm a big, I'm a big believer. Yeah, I'm a big believer in um, in porn needs to be in sex ed and the and just told that it's like watching a James Bond film. It's not. It's a fantasy world that isn't yeah. real, and this is what's real. And then Absolutely. you know, it doesn't take much to add that to sex ed. Exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. And, and female pleasure while you're at it. <laughs> like it like no one taught female pleasure like you heard that boys had like wet dreams and erections and girls have periods and I was like well I get wet dreams and I've got a vulva like where why was that not taught to me when I was at school like it just yeah it was like boys have pleasure and girls have periods and it was like oh yeah no I definitely I definitely have the odd odd dream where you just wake up bang in the middle of it and you wake up going no come on (laughs) back to sleep back to sleep please (laughs) am I gonna have to finish myself off here (laughs) (laughs) exactly but you um and you do amazing workshops so what um yeah talk us through the workshops that you're doing so the workshops are called labia lessons and um I was doing them in real life before obviously but now um they're doing I'm doing them on zoom which actually has been great because it means I've got to get people from all across the UK and some other parts of the world as well coming along and it's basically a a a look at the vulva um not a physical look I'm not here with my legs apart (laughs) although maybe I should go on zoom wide (laughs) angle on zoom (laughs) (laughs) so it's basically finding out everything that you didn't find out in your sex education at school about the vulva from like absolute basics up to stuff that they wouldn't have taught you anyway um and it's basically talking about what is normal and like we've already just said everything is normal like there is no abnormal so but people come along with all these questions thinking like no one else has this I'm the only one that looks like this and it's this event is basically to show you no that's fine that's normal you should be happy like well you know there's no reason to be unhappy with with what you've got um but it's fun and it's laid back and it's it's me talking about my favorite pubic hair and like silly stories and um we've got a period pub quiz and then at the end everybody gets a little craft pack sent out to them beforehand and then we all make vulvas and they're just like it's a really fun way of like solidifying what you've learned by physically making something but also then you've got something like positive and fun that you can like put on the fridge in your house and then you can talk to your flatmates about like yeah just not tell vulva. them <laughs> I may I remember making one like, I mean ages ago I think I just started KK okay, okay, like 15 years ago and I remember making one and um I gave it to my mum as an ashtray without she thought it was a shell and it was literally I didn't tell her for about four years I think it was my brother that, my brother that told her that <laughs> she was like <laughs> It was just sat on her mantelpiece, just sort of. Oh, bless. Um, used it in an ashtray. I was like, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and what um the la- the whole language around velvets? What what do you think needs to change on that? How can yeah? I people think talk personally, about? I believe that we should be teaching children from the get go what their genitals are called. So whether that's a vulva or a penis, um what I often hear is parents sort of with their with their little boys they'll be talking about penises but for their little girls they're talking about um like foos and minis and flowers and I just think like you're just kind of when later on when they actually have to learn what the real word is they're going to be confused but also it's putting a sense of shame onto it because if you're not naming something it's kind of like a hiding from it shameful Mm -hmm. thing and it's really empowering to have the right yeah. language for your own body. And from a f- sort of fairly upsetting, like trigger warning, I'm about to talk about sexual assault. But from that point of view, if, if children that have the correct language are much more able to be able to report when something's happening. And there's been studies to show that actually it happens less to those children because if they're using that language, the the predator feels like oh they're probably going to talk yeah to they know that it's not some secret kind of dirty absolutely. dirty play but you know i have got i've got a two year old four year old and six year old and the two and four girls and um the four year old this summer so she was three um yeah asked me what the boy no the boy asked me what lily's what lily's willy's called yeah and i immediately went vagina yeah i didn't even i thought and then he was saying it and he walk past a few hours later and and, so, and um lily was just annoying him and stuff and he was like i'm gonna i'll kick you in the vagina lily and he <laughs> carried on walking my husband looked at my husband looked at me and i went 
<laughs> it just it just came out. I'm not going to give it a stupid name, and now really? it's hilarious because the girls call it a vagina, yeah. um, and um, and Raf Raf calls it vagina, but he's got a really strong va. He goes vagina. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I know that any day now I'm going to get the school calling me. And <laughs> well, there has yeah. been cases of that of like nursery schools ringing up parents and saying, "Oh, your daughter was talking about her vulva, and we it's um, very inappropriate. Can you can you tell her not to use that word?" And I think there was some women who ended up having to get like loads of people ring up this nursery to be like, "Are you joking? Like that's not yeah. offensive." What's she meant to call it? Would you would you would you allow like yeah you know my Lola buzzword. exactly like why is that any better and mm. um but the nursery was saying like oh it's not us we don't mind but we other parents might think it's offensive if your daughter teaches it to them and it's like well what it's, called. it's what it's called like that's... boys run around going you know rough runs around going look at my willy mummy so why <laughs> <laughs> exactly and then that's all we're doing is reinforcing this idea that 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 vulvas and vaginas are inherently dirty shameful wrong shouldn't be talked about shouldn't be discussed and I, that's what upsets me is that yeah because of that we've got a whole world of people that don't know what vulvas look like and don't understand the differences between them and then that's when you get horrible bullying and you get beef curtains in your head as someone's going <laughs> down on you and like yeah that took me good that took me good until I was about 30 to get that one out yeah well I'm glad it's gone now because yeah that should not be in your head when someone's going down it's on you gone. it's still there yeah the alphabet's gone now the alphabet's gone. <laughs> but you but also you're doing you know it's not you're not just a one-trick pony of vulvas um you're doing great kind of the ed sex education around SDIs and how are you how how are you doing that how have you done that so some of that's just come from people asking me, oh, can you put more um, vulvas on your feed with, with some STIs or with certain, with, but yeah, certain issues on them to kind of to help normalise them. And, you know, I hadn't even thought about it, and which actually is a bit embarrassing, but when they asked, I thought, God, yeah, of course, like that makes total sense. And also it helps us to know what to look for. Um, so I always tell people to look at their genitals and know what is normal for them so that way when if anything ever changes if you get lumps or bumps or discoloration or anything you can go to the doctor and say this wasn't here last month and can you can you have a look and see if it's okay um so for me it's really important that it's that looking at our genitals and understanding what they look like is really super important but also it's all just part and parcel of the whole talking about vulvas i feel like it's it's just really important that we we understand more about the different STIs because so many of them are normal. So the one I think you're referring to is a genital warts that I put up yeah. on my Instagram yesterday. Um, genital warts is like really common and it comes from a, a HPV, which is a virus that is passed on through sexual contact. HPV is like so common. Most people will have HPV at some point in their lives. Your body normally gets rid of it within two years. There's loads of different types of HPV. Some of them can cause cancer and some of them cause genital warts. And it's just really important for us to know that. Like information is power. If you know what's happening with your body, then you're in control. And I think I think some of that comes to me. I was sexually assaulted when I was um 18. And for me, like taking back control of my body and specifically my vulva and my vagina is really important for me a really empowering thing for me to do and I kind of want to give that to other people and to and to for them to I don't want it to be a sort of like weird dark area where you're like I don't know what it looks like I don't know what it's yeah. supposed to look like I don't know what these bits are like there's a lump there I don't know if that's normal or not like I want it to be a part of your body that you know as well as you know anything else like yeah, and hours, do. like doing selfies yeah. we know what our faces look like but I could don't know what, that's the thing. I don't think now. most people. I've had this conversation with friends in their forties, and <laughs> they haven't got a clue what. And like, yeah. I'm like, have you never like put a mirror? And they're like, yeah. oh no, never. Yeah. And you just think it's to me, it's weird because you know our sexuality drives us. It's the core of all of us. And you know, even the World Health Organization had said that said that sexual pleasure is a basic human right. Yeah. But as women, we don't it's extraordinary how much how little we've done or learned it's like this black hole which yeah. i just i just find really sad actually because it's no yeah. woman's fault it's just how we've been brought you know what i mean it's just all the Absolutely. messaging around us has never been about us 
Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that that thing that you just said, <coughs> not being our fault is really important because um, I have people often, if they've come to the labia lessons and I've had people discover for the first time that they don't pee out of their clitoris, they pee out of their urethra. And then they're like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I didn't know. And it's like, well, if you weren't taught it, how would you know? Yeah, how like, would you know? You, you don't, yeah, you can't be embarrassed about the things that no one's taught you. Like, that's not your fault. That's a failing on society that we haven't got the basic knowledge of our genitals. I just think that's really sad. Yeah, and all that's the thing. And the, that's the thing that, you know, the female pleasure points. There's so many points around there. Oh, yeah. You know, that you're never taught about. We are, what we get taught is sex is the end point, you know, the penis and the vagina and the man mm. ejaculating. Yeah. That's the end point. So, yeah. Well, we never you don't get taught in it it's all kind of trial or error that suddenly you might yeah. happen to if you're lucky with the guy that actually you know makes an effort in different places and you go oh actually that's yeah. quite nice I feel like that absolutely <laughs> yeah. yeah and that's the thing I think if you only think that you're only you're only going to ever have an orgasm by having something like penetration the majority of vulva don't do it, it doesn't don't, happen yeah <laughs> don't have an orgasm that way um actually what i will just show you really quickly so um this is a clitoris and it's actually a life-size clitoris um so if i show you how it would sit on my vulva oh, yeah. like it's basically like this so all of these bits come down here that's giving you like sensation all the way down to like the top of your like the, your thigh crease all underneath your vulva everything is like connected to the clitoris and so it's really it's not just about like the little like the button at the top yeah because a lot of people like, just think that clitoris is sort of yeah, this little one only... centimeter inch long thing it's yeah. like it's as long as a willy quite yeah, frankly you know, exactly well thing. it comes from it's made from <laughs> the same stuff because it also this is basically um engorged so this is like an erect clitoris but when it's not turned on it's all just like floppy <laughs> floppy and sad like a little <laughs> floppy penis but like yeah yeah, you only see this teeny tiny tip of the um, clitoris, but all of this is underneath and it's just full of feelings. Her and endings and yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And did, um, finally, just tell us about your, the new initiative you're doing, the New Moon Club. That, oh, that's yeah, actually yeah, not... Ex explain no, that. that. <laughs> so that's actually not mine. So I did an Instagram takeover with um, Milk oh, and okay. Yeah. So I'm not doing that. But um, I do have, what I would love to just show you is for... Christmas especially but all year round I try and make these little um like vulva decorations so that these are like just little ones you can hang them on your Christmas tree or just like wherever in your house and I just love them because I just think they're um they're all like different shapes and sizes but, um, maybe yeah. that's why I should buy my mom and see if it takes her another four years to oh, you totally should go around <laughs> and put one on her tree and just be like I call you a Christmas decoration exactly. look one of the kids made it at nursery <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can they do you say do you make can you sell are you selling them? Yeah, I sell them yeah. on Etsy. So they're um if you look at this as a vulva on Instagram or if you Google this is a vulva Etsy, you'll find them. Um but yeah, I just kind of feel like the more we can put vulvas out there, I have them on t shirts and like bags mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff. I just think the more we can have them out there, the more normal they are and we can just celebrate them and then they can just become I've got a big fridge magnet body. actually and it's surprising how few people Yeah. I think they all think it's just some kind of artwork yeah <laughs> it's surprising how much stuff i do that people are like oh what is that and i'm like i mean it's me how do you not it's know of course it's going to be a vulva <laughs> <laughs> it's my vulva <laughs> yeah um cool well, do you know what thank you so much oh, um, for chatting vulva it's amazing do you know what it's amazing that you can, we can have half an hour of just talking vulvas it just shows oh, and we've yeah. only just scratched the surface really so yeah it shows definitely how important oh, they are yeah. lovely yeah so thank you you're welcome and, um, see you soon Cool. Cheers. Um, Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>